I have a couple I've been working with for seven months. We were doing quite well. I've met with them multiple times via telehealth where he is visibly exhausted. When he's in this condition, he becomes childlike and argumentative. He is unable to see the part he plays in the cycle. The wife says, you have a very full plate and the first thing to go is me. The husband will shake his head and adamantly deny this. I'd like some guidance as to what to do, especially since, you know, I believe the, the wife is spot on. Oh, okay. yes. Inflections are mine. <laughs> That's how I hear her saying this. So anyway. Yes, and of course we've each felt that way. Yes. And right. So we have to catch that um, feeling aligned with the wife's, in this case, the wife's perspective. So, wow, in a way, this is classic pursue withdrawal. Withdrawers are known to get preoccupied with tasks. Mm -hmm. And withdrawers will often cope by adding more to their plate to be busy, which keeps them in their comfort zone. Of course, the partner of this withdrawer is going to feel unimportant and I don't matter. And that's what it sounds to me like she's protesting. I'm the first thing to get dropped. Mm -hmm. which hurts. I would need to be working with this withdrawer to say, help me understand what happens on the inside when your partner shares her experience. She feels dropped, real or perceived. That's her experience. And he's adamant. But I would say the strength of his adamancy correlates with something else. And I'm not, I'm not smart enough to know what it might be for him. But he's adamant based on what? Fueled by what on the inside of him? What emotion drives his adamancy? He doesn't feel believed. He doesn't feel understood and respected. We want to get into his inner world because he's getting very defensive. And the more adamant he is, I would say the more defensive he must be feeling. Right. And then the role of exhaustion. In this case, it's adding a PhD program to an already full plate, perhaps. But I think, especially in this time of COVID, I have felt the limitations of clients' exhaustion. I have felt that I can't do as much as I'm used to doing. My EFT is different. When clients are at home with their kids, their special needs kids, their multiple kids, they've become a teacher instantly. They're still trying to do their job. They can't afford to lose their job, of course. They have professional obligations they'd like to meet. Sleep gets compromised. And I know me just being a human when sleep has been elusive for whatever reason, I feel alien. I feel not in myself. I feel not with myself. So exhaustion is real. So sometimes I've said to my couples, because we're in this for another couple of months, do you want to continue meeting? Do we just shift our expectations that meeting will be more crisis containment, stress of the week containment, which is fine. That's fair. That's humane. And the wife goes, oh, no way. I'm fried and at the risk of burning out, which would be really clinically important to track. The withdrawer might feel relief. Yes, I need this hour back. I I am exhausted. I don't know how to tell clients to sleep more, but I do know how to track the process and offer a process that's better paced based on their real life experience. Timing matters. Timing like, matters. So there may be a certain six month period where you can get great traction with EFT and another six month period where you hardly move. Yeah. And then we just keep track of this pursuing partner's needs. Like, how is this for you? This is going to be harder on you than it is on your withdrawing partner. I want to care for you. We're doing the best we can given the limitations of being human and two dual working parents with little kids at home during a pandemic. OMG. Right. So you humanize like his exhaustion. It's not like he's failed and he can't do this. You humanize it. He's human. It's too much. And you also keep track of her experience of maybe feeling like this is the one time that I get even a drop of you. Yes. And as, as you say this, Jen, I appreciate the lovely reflections because as you say, we humanize their experience and his exhaustion. At the same time, we don't want to bear with my wording, everybody. We don't want to let him off the hook that his coping strategy doesn't have cost associated with it. It does. Our coping strategies always impact our loved ones and it impacts our loved ones the most. Because the attachment system is more online. The attachment needs are higher with love relationships. And so he does need to be able to say, I get that I'm preoccupied with the stuff of life right now. And I like it, even though I am exhausted. All of us hide behind our exhaustion sometimes. All of us hide behind our coping strategies. If we can just get him to acknowledge he's aware of his impacting his partner. Okay, okay. Normalize it. It's human. But at the same time, not gloss over the echoes of it and the impact of it that are very real. If he can own it, and I'm hesitant to use that phrase, but own it, I guess what gets in the way is he gets adamant that it's not true. Just at the time when we need to make space on the inside of him to take in her distress because she feels so unimportant and the first thing to get dropped. 
Right. So that adamancy for me would feel like I would work with that like a defense. It's too painful to realize she feels trapped. It's too painful to somehow get a message. You're not enough. You're not providing enough. Mm. It's too painful. You're too exhausted. You're so goal oriented. You're so focused on these other achievements. It's too painful to realize your partner's feeling left in the wake. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.